All right. Yeah, let's kick it off. So, yeah, thanks everyone for being here. 31st uh, Gore Community Call, always awesome. Um, yeah, bringing, bringing updates across a bunch of different departments and uh, initiatives we have going on at Agoric. Um, and uh, I think I think it would be kind of fun to kick it off with, you know, the Chainboard Academy's recent uh, Agoric boot camp that they just launched last week, or actually this week, technically, with their first course. Um, you know, Jeet, I think uh, you might be the best person to kind of touch on that. And I know you've been doing work with them to get, get that position. So go for it. Yeah. Uh, so yes, uh, one of our great mainnet partners, uh, Byte Pitch, um, launched Chainboard Academy, which is this fantastic 10-week program to help uh, teach new developers um, all about Agoric. So they just had their first uh, lecture, I believe, this week. And uh, they had over 200 applicants for the program. Uh, and over I guess, around 40 people showed up for their first lecture, which is super exciting. And um, yeah, they're just going to grow it out. And then people are going to be engaging every week to learn more about hardened JavaScript and build out uh, smart contracts using hardened JS. Um, and then finally, it'll culminate in a uh, project showing off uh, a DAP or some smart contracts that they've made. So yeah, we're really excited about this initiative, working with them, um, excited to see what students will put out. And yeah, if anyone has any questions, uh, yeah, feel free, please feel free to reach out to me uh, because this is something that we're hoping to run in perpetuity uh, from now on. That's really exciting. And what will they do? What will they be able to do once they come out of the academy? Yeah, so um, they're covering a bunch of topics, including um, so smart contracts, ERTP, um, working with different APIs, so working with oracles. So really being able to fully launch uh, dApps coming out of it. So yet again, just really excited to see the kind of projects that people will be working on. And hopefully, you know, this will truly be almost like an incubator for different projects that are building on Agoric. That's cool. That's very, very cool. I'm so excited. And we ha we've had people that we, that that came and, you know, have, have been uh, uh, looking, digging into the code and being able to point them at Chainboard Academy and they dive in and go, wow, this is really, this is really great stuff. So that, that, that it's been great to hear. <clears throat> awesome. Awesome. Um, yeah. My, my understanding too, is it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's meant for fairly entry to intermediate level developers right with familiarity in, in javascript it's it's uh, that's correct yeah so it, it is accessible so yeah i think for the people on this call or if you know folks who are looking to dip their toes and they are you know traditionally more js leaning this this could be a really good opportunity and um yeah the yeah the next the second lecture which is actually also open you've mentioned you know is is on monday april 10th so that's kind of the the opportunity there to get your foot in the door if you're interested so uh yeah definitely we'll be announcing that and sharing more information you know throughout this week until that second lecture starts again. Um, cool. Thank you, Jeet. Um, you know, why don't we dive into some of the, you know, maybe the one of the larger topics around mainnet 1B. Uh, maybe Roland and, uh, and Dean, if you want to jump in. Yeah, sure. So, uh, Dean, feel free to interrupt me uh, whenever you want. Uh, but, I'll add uh, color. <laughs> okay, okay, color commentary. Um, yeah, so so uh, as lots of you know, uh, the, the next release that we're targeting is Mainnet 1B, which is really the completion of uh, what we had been calling Mainnet 1, which is sort of the, uh, the release of the virtual machine, smart contract framework, and the full set of inter-protocol contracts, um, which, again, inter-protocol... Uh, controls IST, which is the gas token that pays for execution in the virtual machine. So there's there's a, a tight coupling there with with Agoric uh, more generally as a chain, and Mainnet One really gets us to the the point that we were uh, we had been targeting. And so uh, yeah, I, I like that's... referring to that, by the way, as as a symbiosis. <laughs> uh, yes, a, a, a very nice symbiosis. Um, and and so this release, uh, you know, most of you on the call likely know, I, IST is already out, uh, controlled by the PSM contracts. This release inc includes a whole bunch of additional um, contracts to control the inter-protocol, which include vaults, liquidation, reserve, um, some additional updates to governance, some updates to the smart wallet, but then critically also includes a bunch of platform upgrades that needed to happen to get us to the point where uh, we're sort of in a position for third parties to build and deploy. And so that includes kernel and contract upgrades. So the ability for your contracts to sur survive a chain upgrade, uh, it includes validator state sync, which I know validators have been asking for 
whatever. Um, so the, let, me, let me jump in on, on, a, on a couple of those just to expand on them, if I may. Um, yeah, please. The, the, the upgrade, there are multiple ways, there are multiple forms of upgrade um, and that contracts can opt into. Obviously, you can simply say, I'm going to make a version two. That's a new contract. Users can migrate over at their leisure. Um, for system level contracts or for contracts that have, you know, long lived service state or what have you, being able to upgrade in place or have contracts opt into upgrading in place is really valuable, really powerful, and as it turns out, really hard. Um, that's important for the inter-protocol contracts because they're so integral to, to the operation of an economy that being able to upgrade in place if there's you know, performance or scaling or security or even new features um, that, that, that might drive an upgrade is really, really valuable. And so um, the mechanism is a contract says, you know, it, it says what its government governance is. It's got, you know, declared governance parameters and it says what electorate, you know, whether it's the builder DAO or the econ committee or a contract's own uh, electorate that can vote on and determine um, uh, 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 what what changes happen to parameters. And one of the things that a contract can say is, and I can be upgraded if the electorate says I can be upgraded, where the electorate would say, okay, we're going to start a new contract um, that is the replacement for that old contract. The old contract shuts down and all the, what's referred to as baggage, all of the the, 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 the um, state data that is critical to that original contract is made available for the new contract starting up. And so a lot of the abstractions and wiring and libraries to make that um, straightforward is what would what have been built in this mainnet 1B. So it's so it's tools for declaring the state that needs to survive an upgrade, declaring the 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 baggage to carry forward um, into into the contract's new life in the future, and uh, so that it's available for the next uh, version of that contract. And so it's, so it is, you know, allows declared state, you know, stored and available in, in the, in the Merkle tree. It allows upgrade to new versions of the contract controlled by the contract selected process of governance. And that latter is really important because this is, you know, lots of support for upgrade, but it's not the case that the builder DAO that, 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 that um, build stakers can upgrade third party contracts. It's up to the third party contracts. What, process of upgrade they want to provide and the system can have multiple multiple of these strategies um nicely coexist so it's been a lot of work going into that it's going to be you know it's going to be really really powerful really really big deal um and people have been working on various forms of how to do upgrade for for years and years and how to do it balanced with the interests of you know stable immutable contracts and 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 um, uh, and declining ability to change things that people are relying on so you can have, you know, what it takes to upgrade go down in the future, you know, or, or require more unanimity in the future, all those kinds of things. So it's, it's a really nice uh, bunch of stuff, and I'm excited for it rolling out. Um, yeah, and, and I, oh, go, go ahead, ahead, Dean. No, no, go ahead. I, and I was just going to say, you know, it, it sort of speaks to also what, what Interprotocol has done for the Agoric team in terms of helping us pull features into the platform and make them available to third parties right. because we need them, right? You know, I, I've, I work really hard to avoid saying eat our own dog food, but it really is a useful, <laughs> it's a useful phrase, right? You know, we, we have a protocol launching um, and, and as a result, we've had to sort of prioritize platform features and it, it really has been very useful uh, in that regard. <laughs> yep. I'll, I'll mention two more. Um, so you mentioned state sync. Um, so for people who, you know, state sync is, uh, is, you know, starts out at the bottom at the cosmos level, but we have to propagate it all the way up to the state of the running JavaScript um, system, where it'll validators end up sort of continually generating snapshots that are part of consensus so that a new validator starting up, instead of having to replay the world from scratch from when it started a year or two years or whatever it is ago, um, uh, running these code, instead they can get a snapshot that's not just, oh, I'm going to trust what that other validator that I, you know, that I kind of know as friends, I'm just going to trust whatever uh, 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 code they provide me or whatever um, chain state they provide me. Instead, they get a, a snapshot that that there was consensus about that multiple validators agreed that this is a snapshot of the system at the right time. They can start from that to get a leg up to 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 be able to you know start from the state from only a couple of days ago, replay forward and get get a new validator launched and running in in much much shorter period of time. 
And, um, you know, as anyone who's started validators on, on, on chains that didn't have that feature, it can take quite some time for a validator to catch up with consensus and start participating, like, you know, days or weeks in some cases. And, you know, we know we want people to be able to start validators much more easily than that. You know, the fact that it also helps with testing and, and, and reproducibility and that sort of things is, um, is just gravy. Um, this is uh, this is a key feature uh, um, in Cosmos that we want to make sure is available um, as part of the the Agoric uh, platform. You know, even though there's a lot more state to be encompassed in one of these snapshots, um, you know that, that's why it took some time to integrate in. But it is um, really exciting to see that now working. So, so that's state sync, and uh, um, uh, uh, and and we're glad that our validators insisted on it because it's really darn useful. <laughs> So, so yeah, so looking looking at what we accomplished in March, a lot of it was driving all of these efforts forward, obviously. Um, but then you know, a, a couple key things also got started, which was uh, the contract audits uh, got scheduled and actually began. I'm, I think that might have technically been yep. April, but it was it was close, <laughs> maybe end of March. Um, and so so contract audits uh, started from an auditor that we've worked with in the past and have we we yeah, really right. liked. Yeah, the, the quality of their work is, is super high. So we're really happy with that relationship. Um, and so those will go on uh, through towards sort of mid-April. Um, we also, I, I think on the last community call, I mentioned that we were just starting to test vaults. Uh, we're now at the stage where I'm actually, when I'm off this call, I'm going to continue testing our example liquidation tools, uh, triggering liquidations of those vaults, placing bids, uh, making sure everything is is working there. And so liquidation testing is getting rolling. Um, and to that end, we have uh, an example uh, liquidation CLI uh, that would let third parties bid on vault liquidations. And so if that's you or if you are someone that wants the opportunity to bid on liquidations, likes bidding on liquidations, knows people that like bidding on liquidations, uh, you should please reach out to us because we'd love to get feedback on does this example tool make sense? Is there, uh, could we document it better? Um, would you like to run through a few tests with us? Uh, so that's something we're, we're certainly interested in, in driving forward. Um, and you'll probably hear more from us specifically on that over the next um, over the next several weeks, but I uh, just figured I would mention it on this call as well. Um, and I know I'm, I'm taking a lot of time here, so well, let me, let me go ahead, Dean. I was going to add, and the other thing, part of the reason we did the command line is it's a really nice illustration, A, of being able to do command line back again, where, where you've got command line tools that can exercise um, uh, the JavaScript smart contracts with arbitrary offers and all that sort of thing. But also it should be a nice illustration of what it would take to programmatically drive processes like liquidation through the, the um, uh, JavaScript objects and account objects and so forth. So. So, uh, so it's a, it's a good exemplar if what you do is integrate driving of on-chain smart contracts from, um, from, you know, robots of some form or another. In addition, if you're somebody or know somebody that, uh, is interested in bid building a UI for liquidations, uh, that's something to reach out to us about also. Um, we sort of expect that at launch liquidation will be driven through CLI or, or third-party bots. Uh, but a uh, front end to, to drive liquidation is, is certainly something that would be uh, it would open it up to a whole bunch of people in the in the ecosystem. Um, OK, and then uh, beyond that, we also have done uh, an awesome, awesome sprint over the last couple of weeks on scalability. Uh, and that's going to be a focus uh, not only for April, but then moving past this mainnet 1B release, uh, doing doing work to make sure that the observability of swing set is clear. So as as contracts execute in VATS and how they interoperate with each other, uh, how they consume resources, uh, we, we need to improve the tooling there. And that that's something that we're starting here uh, and we'll we'll sort of view for this release as we'll get in all the all the stuff that we can, but uh, becomes a priority as we shift towards a mainnet two focus where uh, we're, we're looking at primarily supporting third parties building and deploying on, on Agoric. And so um, that's been driven by uh, by engineering and, and really has already shown some uh, <laughs> really great progress. So that's been awesome. Um, and then, yeah, po post post mainnet one B, it really is all mainnet two. So it's scalability. Uh, product and engineering have already started reaching out to the mainnet two partners to make sure that we're we're driving in their requirements into the platform, or at least understanding how to prioritize them. So those interviews have have started and will continue over the next couple of weeks. Um, and then improving third party documentation, improving uh, our example contracts, uh, and then 
documenting and, and explaining uh, things like contract upgrade that, that Dean went through here uh, to third parties and making sure that if you're building on Agoric, you know how to use these tools, why you need to use them, uh, and, and starting to go through those processes too. So um, there's sort of, uh, as usual, a lot going on, but th that's been our focus over the, you know, the, the previous month and, and what we're looking forward to in April. Um, and then obviously we're looking forward to a, a mainnet 1B release uh, as, soon as, as soon as we're confident in liquidation. Um, and we have some internal targets for that date, but I'll, I'll uh, leave, it, leave it unsaid for now. So I'll turn it back to Santi. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Roland and Dean. Um, great updates. I, uh, I, I definitely want to bring uh, JD on stage for a second. Um, you know, we have some stuff around the delegation program that I know you wanted to touch on and potentially some other community related efforts. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, a couple of things from me. Uh, first, some context for those unfamiliar. Uh, Agoric is, of course, a proof of stake blockchain, relies on a decentralized community of validators to operate and secure the network. And in an effort to support the network, Agoric Opco kicked off a delegation program in early 2022 that had two phases to it. Uh, first phase was to sort of bootstrap the Agoric mainnet, support the validators who were there uh, in the, participating in the incentivized testnet. And then phase two uh, was ad ad some additional delegations uh, with a new requirement around security standards, such as using TM, KMS, or Horcrux. And so moving forward, we're going to be updating the program requirements. So it's not just a new round like the phase two was. There's going to be a new questionnaire, a new application form going out. Uh, the requirements for this will uh, maintain that strong focus on secure infrastructure as we want to support a high performance, high quality validator set. And we'll, so we'll be distributing a new questionnaire uh, application form in the coming weeks. So. Uh, stay tuned for updates on that in the forum. Uh, I'll be posting. Uh, I'll be posting there, and then uh, I'll relay that to Discord, and uh, hopefully get an announcement on Twitter uh, around the same time for those who follow here. And then, uh, if you have any questions, if you're a validator listening in, uh, feel free to reach out to me on Discord. Uh, you can find me there, JD Lorax zero triple seven. And uh, and so yeah, uh, I've been working with Jeet on that, and I'll just uh, uh, I'll just poke Jeet if there's anything that I may have missed or anything you may want to add about the delegation program updates. Oh, thanks, JD. Uh, just to say that I'll be um, I'll be supporting JD um, going forward with the delegation program. But yeah, looking forward to continuing to work with uh, a lot of our wonderful validators. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And and just one more to that is, again, just uh, stay tuned for those updates in the forum at community.agoric.com. And on the topic of the forum, uh, just wanted to also mention that, uh, so Notional recently became an Agoric validator and right away started a discussion about uh, adding build external incentives on Osmosis. And that topic led to another discussion started by Red Rabbit about IST Osmo as a possible super fluid pool on Osmosis. And so there's some there's a little discussion started in the forum about that. So if anybody has opinions or if you have thoughts on the matter, uh, please join us there. Uh, that's community.agoric.com. And would just love to see more feedback and to see people start to lead that discussion forward. And uh, uh, of course, Agoric governance can't make that decision, but the community can work together and seek that uh, get the support needed to bring that forward to Osmosis governance. So, um, yeah, that's it from me. Uh, and again, just feel free to reach out to me on Discord or here on Twitter, and I'll be happy to chat more about uh, the delegation program. Awesome. And back to back to you, Santi. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you for the update, JD. Um, yeah, so I think uh, we're kind of coming to the close. Uh, just a few remarks on events that are coming up. It's, it's a pretty busy few months uh, coming up. So the Inner Protocol community call is uh, April 20th. So if you're interested, definitely mark that. They should be sending a reminder up pretty soon, I think. Um, we will be uh, around NFT NYC, which is April 12th and 14th. Uh, we're actually sponsoring a Cosmos uh, meetup uh, hosted by the one and only Jeet, <laughs> and that's on April 13th. So if you're in the city around that time, definitely stop by. 
uh, the registration link is, is on Twitter and we'll, we'll be sharing that again uh, a little closer to the event as well. Um, we are sponsoring uh, Line Hacks, which, gee, this might be a good opportunity for you to plug it <laughs> if you want. I know you're involved with that. Uh, yeah, uh, Line Hacks is a hackathon uh, held by or sponsored or being thrown by both uh, Columbia University and uh, NYU um, happening from the 14th to 16th of April. So, um, yeah, if anyone's around as well and will be attending, uh, I'll have to connect with you there. So please reach out. Yeah. And yeah, it should be good. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that one. I, I know we have a, a few folks from Agoric attending that. So, yeah, very much looking forward to uh, to uh, to that student run hackathon. Uh, and then there is Cornell Blockchain Conference on April 21st. Um, uh, and probably one of the larger events coming up, which is Consensus in Austin. That's April 26th to 28th. So if anyone is there, uh, Dean uh, will be speaking uh, at Protocol Village on the 28th. And um, there is an IBC summit happening on the 28th as well. Uh, so a bunch of stuff, as we know, these events have a lot of turnout, a lot of side events. Um, so if you are in the area, definitely let us know. We're happy to meet up and chat. Um, and that about covers it. Um, anything else I missed or anything someone wants to add? No, nope, other than we're, we're, we're busy cranking away, getting this stuff out and really excited to, to bring it out to the, the community in the very near future. Um, so, so, uh, uh, and, and the extended community, including, uh, uh, the inter, the inter, um, folks, when is the next intercommunity call? Right. That's a that's a, another important question. That's a, 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 a as I said, our, our symbiotic symbiotic partner that drive that drives the economy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the, the next meeting calls on April 20th for, for inner protocol. Um, I, the rule of thumb we have is uh, first of the month, every first Thursday is the Agora community call. Every third Thursday is the inter protocol community call. So we never have overlap. <laughs> I think that's correct. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, it's a very crypto friendly date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. April twentieth. <20th. laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, and otherwise, look. For, you know, otherwise, uh, for validators, look for the uh, delegation policy, as as JD said, um, uh, uh, for discussion. You know, drafts for discussion up in the community in the not too distant future with with. Um, uh, JD and Jeet and, and Jesse and others participating there. So uh, we look forward to seeing all of you all um, uh, for the ne next round of delegation and, and all of you all in the uh, uh, testing and rollout of uh, the next release. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everybody, for joining the uh, 31st Community Call, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll wrap it up. Have a good uh, afternoon and evening. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.